when you live in the world, you need some time out from the world. Because what does the world have to offer? There's gain and there's loss. Status, loss of status, praise and criticism, pleasures and pains. You know, although some of those things may be nourishing for the body, they're not necessarily nourishing for the mind. What nourishes the mind is the mind's ability to be still, to rest, not to have to take on any duties outside. And this is why we have the practice, is to find that our genuine nourishment lies inside. And it begins with the stillness. How do you get the mind to be still with the breath? We try to make the breath interesting. Learn how to savor the breath, enjoy the breath. If you don't pay much attention to it, it functions only to keep you alive. But if you really pay attention, you begin to realize that the breath is connected to the energy flow throughout the body. And the quality of the energy flow is going to have a big influence both on the body and on the mind. And the more you learn how to savor it, the more good it can do. And the more you'll be willing to stay right here. It's like those labels in the back of chocolate. When they tell you that it has woody notes or touches of raspberry or banana or whatever, you have to stop and pay attention to what your taste buds are telling you. And in that moment of stopping and paying attention, there is a little bit of rest. This is how they increase the pleasure out of the you can get out of the chocolate bar. In other words, you put more into it, and you get more out of it. You put more attention in, you get more stillness, more attention. The tension becomes the stillness. As the Buddha said, there is no pleasure aside from stillness. That's what we're trying to develop in the breath, is how to become a connoisseur of the breath. What are the warm notes in the breath? What are the cool notes? What are the hot notes? They're there if you pay attention. And if you pay attention, then the mind will have to get very, very still. You can make another comparison. It's like listening to music way off in the distance. You have to make yourself very still so you can hear it. And in that stillness, there's a certain amount of well-being. It's actually the stillness of the mind that gives you the well-being, not so much the music. And it's this quality of paying attention, being really alert to what the breath is doing, and being sensitive. You become sensitive by learning how to enjoy it, looking for its subtleties. How does the breath tell you the long breath is in breath is long enough or the out breath is long enough? There are signs, but you have to look for them. And in looking for them, the mind has to get still. So this is a pleasure that's actually good for the mind. And it doesn't require things outside. You don't have to go out and buy bars and bars of chocolate. You've got the breath coming in and going out. As long as you're alive, it's going to be coming in and going out. So learn how to savor it. As we live in the world, the world just keeps beating us back, beating us down. We have to keep fighting it off. But with the breath, you can open up to it, and it will nourish you. And then you can take this nourishment with you wherever you go, because wherever you go, it's not the case that you're going to leave the breath here at your meditation cushion. You're breathing all the time, so you can learn how to savor the breath all the time. Whatever part of the mind is not occupied by the affairs of the world, you can occupy it with affairs of the breath. Make the breath the container for the rest of your experience. That way the mind will find energy, find nourishment, be able to tap into its source of nourishment wherever it goes. <laughs>